Luke chapter 1, verse 17, he says, I'm raising you up in the spirit and power of Elijah Thank you, Lord. to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Come on. And this is what I knew that God was calling me to the prodigal generation. Yeah, you know, listen, everybody, you're watching now, and I, I want to share with you a scripture too, because I love the one that you just shared, Donna. Uh, and this goes along with what Donna is saying. This is from the Amplified Classic, okay? Uh, this is Proverbs 22, 6, and it says this, train up a child in the way he should go. And then in the Amplified, it says this, and in keeping with his individual gift or bent, and when he yeah. is old, he will not depart from it. And you know, Donna, I honestly believe it's it's what you were just saying. We can't just say, okay, you're a preacher's kid, so I'm going to, you know, have my eye on that. You're going to end up in the pulpit. Everybody has this one thing, this goal, but we are not supposed to do that. We're supposed to train our children in the scriptures, how to pray, how to fast, and you know, and how to do the things for the kingdom to come to earth, for them to walk in their identity with Christ. But then they each will have an individual gift or a bent yeah. towards maybe nursing or a bent towards, you know, uh, teaching like you did or, or whatever that is. And when we foster those individual things in each of our children, they will, quote, not depart from it when they get older because it will be something that they love because it was yeah. already in their personality. It was already in their makeup. It was already a gifting that God had given to them instead of us trying to force them into the little box we think all preachers' kids belong to, like the pulpit. Yes, and let them work through the process. Maybe God will use them in the pulpit one day, but listen, not everybody needs to jump in the pulpit right away. There's a process that we walk through where God is teaching us, and as we begin to learn, then we get to share the revelation as the Holy Spirit makes way for that. I want us to pray right now, Donna. I want us to pray that we are going to rec that the parents are going to recognize their children's gifts and their bents, and that God is going to give that land. That you yes. said that point number two was that He promised David a land, and that. That's the particular place that they're called to. Like, I'm called to prison ministry, and I'm called to media. That's my land, okay, for that recognition of the gift and the bands for the parents. But then let's release by decree that land that each child has, that they're going to, when they know that when you get your land, man, you get ignited for God, and you come out of that sin that has held you captive. So can yeah. we pray that way? Lord, I'm going to pray right now according to Psalm 112. You said the children of the righteous will be mighty on earth. Oh, and Lord, I speak that over the children, whether they're young children or adult children. I break the spirit of confusion off of their minds and I speak the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding mm. to come upon them, Lord. Lord, I pray pray that their spirits would be open to hear your voice as never before. Many of them are already crying out to you, is there a place in the kingdom for me? Lord, I ask you to develop deep roots in these young people, God. Place them in a place, Lord God, where they can be fruitful and bear fruit after their kind. Lord, I ask you for supernatural mm. favor, open doors for them, Lord God, and bring confirmation from more than just the parents, Lord. Let others see their giftings and talents, Lord, and call them forth. We as the body of Christ calling forth all of those gifts, and we declare this generation will not only be saved but they will be fruitful mm. for the kingdom in jesus name yes lord. hallelujah mm. thank you lord and we call forth that land that special yeah. place that god is calling each of the prodigals to like he called me to prison ministry because i went to prison that was yeah. my land and so i have a heart for that now i love that's my favorite ministry of all, all prison ministry and there's a inside these prodigals hearts for for a place 
It's their land. They might not even know what it is yet, but God knows and he can, can reveal it to them. Now, you had four things that God showed you in this teaching. What's the third one? The third one is the one I really want to focus in on because the enemy has really brought oppression against our young people. You mm. think about the suicide rates through the roof. You think about the gender identity and the confusion that's coming along in that area. You think about um, morality, sexual morality in particular. People don't know right from wrong anymore. And it's like the New Testament says, give no place to the devil. That actually means you know, don't give the devil a piece of you. And a lot of times our young people, they have allowed the enemy to come in and get a, a foothold into their life and they've come under the bondage of demon spirits. Mm. And this is the promise God said, your children will be free from oppression. Mm. They will not be slaves. Thank you. They will be free. God. And I believe we need to speak that over mm. our children every mm. day. My children are not slaves. My children are free in Jesus' name. Mm. They're coming back from the land of the enemy into their own territory. Mm. We've Jesus. got to speak this over our kids. You know, uh, right now there's hurting, hurting parents online right now. In fact, guys, chat in. What is your child struggling with? What do you sense from, from the Holy Spirit and the word of knowledge that your children are under the bondage of and even the demonic spirits that have them hostage? You know, chat in because Don and I are going to pray. Yeah. And we're going to believe for a breakthrough for those children. You know, one of my favorite verses, Don, is 2 Timothy 2.26. It says that we would we would pray that uh, people would receive the free gift of repentance so they can escape the snare of the enemy who yes. has taken them captive to do his will. Mm. I know that, uh, you know, kids out in the streets when they're in rebellion, when, when they're in denial, they don't want to repent, but we can pray for a free gift of repentance. Mm. They don't have to earn it. They don't deserve it. They, you know, but we can pray that they receive it. And then one day out in the middle of their sin, they'll suddenly have the Holy Ghost hit them. And they'll be like, my God, what am I doing? I'm being controlled by the enemy. I, I repent, God. Katie, you're watching the time. Do I have time for a quick testimony? Yes, please. Years ago, we were in a tent meeting in Baltimore. And I was down in the harbor with a friend just doing some sightseeing at night. And we encountered a man named Andrew who asked us for $5. Now, self-righteous Donna said, he ain't getting my $5. <laughs> He's not going to spend it on alcohol. <laughs> but my friend had more God than I did at that time. <laughs> and my friend said, I'll give you $5, but I want you to listen to me. And my friend started to talk to Andrew about Jesus. And Andrew, I'll never forget it. He looked up at us and he said, who are you all? Angels? You sound mm. just like my grandmother. Ah. And I said, can we pray for you, Andrew? And we prayed for him in the street. But this, I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. I said to him, I happened to say to him, listen, if you get on this train and take it to the very last stop, it'll take you to a tent meeting where we're holding services. I want you to come, Andrew. And Wednesday night of that week, it was about five days later, we were given the altar call and I looked and there was Andrew standing in the altar call, giving his heart wow. to Jesus. Now we were two random people on Baltimore Harbor, but I believe it was the prayers of grandma that connected us. Come on. <laughs> it was Come the on. prayers of Thank grandma you, Jesus. that brought him his miracle. Thank and you, this Lord. is what we have to hold on to as we pray, Katie, that the Holy Spirit is the divine navigator. Mm. To get those people to us that can walk us out of oppression. Thank you. Okay, we're going to pray again. I want to start this prayer by praying that your children will receive that 2 Timothy 2.26 free yes. gift of repentance. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, wherever those prodigals are, 
if they're yes. in a ditch somewhere, if they're uh, partying in some bar or some place, you know, with their friends, or if they got a needle in their arm, or if they're out in a job that's in the world world that is not of you, that does not glorify you, Lord, hit them with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord, yeah. we pray that that free gift of repentance, something they could never earn or don't even deserve, that would come upon them right in the middle of their sin so they could escape the snare of the enemy who has taken them captive to do his will. The enemy has lorded over them, Lord. He is in charge. He's controlling them. He's manipulating them. He's driving them into sin and keeping them in sin. But we pray right now that they would be awakened by the Holy Ghost to repent in the midst of their sin so that they can break free from those shackles and chains that the devil is using to hold them captive. We decree that right now in Jesus' name. Go ahead, Donna. I want you to pray. Lord, I thank you that you've given us a promise that we can stop our weeping and we are going to start confessing my children are coming back from the land of the enemy i thank you lord that you hear my prayer and you answer my prayer god and so we know they're on their way home the prodigals are coming in lord we are looking for them we are expecting them and they will find the place in your kingdom where they can be productive and we declare Declare they will be free from addiction. They'll be free from bondage. They'll be free from oppression and depression. There will be no enemy that can rule over them because they are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and fire God. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus name. Amen. You. If you're praying along with Don and I right now, would you chat in and just put a thumbs up or an amen? Because we are yoking our faith together to believe for your children's breakthrough. And please, it's not too late to share the broadcast with somebody who has been praying, believing, and fasting for their prodigal to come home. They can always rewatch the replay on my Facebook page or on our YouTube page.